your right. Oh, surprised to hear me say so. Well, it's not as though I have any fear of facts or truth. That's our mission here, after all. And when you're right, you're right. Under normal circumstances, we should avoid direct contact with our subjects. But first of all, whatever gave you the idea these were normal circumstances? And secondly, you know you were awfully close with Miranda the other day yourself. It seems rather asinine to be asking about policies like this after you failed so dismally. Ah, yes, that's why we're here, isn't it? For you to learn. But what I still can't resolve is why you didn't use the tools you had at your disposal. As it turns out, you were equipped with an interface that day. I had assumed you must have, I don't know, left it in your car or something ridiculous like that. But no, it was right there in your hand. Now why... couldn't... Really? Did you submit it to be inspected for defects after your assignment? Pardon me, your date. Interesting. Oh, no. What I find interesting is how you expect me, of all people, to believe that the reason Miranda Mitchell still remembers everything that happened thus far is that your standard issue tech was... Non-operational. Oh, there are days when I cannot fathom how our organization continues to function with reasoning like that in the ranks. I don't believe the interface failed that day. No. Do you know why? Who do you think designed that device? That's right. So, if you're unwilling to submit it for inspection to prove that something was malfunctioning internally, then perhaps the fault lies elsewhere. Hmm. Your reprimand will have to wait. She's here. Take your place behind the glass. Watch and learn. This operation calls for surgical precision. And thus far, you've been hacking away with a blunt instrument, hiding behind newspapers at cafes, flipping circuit breakers in lecture halls. You have to go for the heart when it comes to these matters. Arm yourself with information. Act with delicacy and aplomb. It's the only way. Oh, hello there. Come in. You must be Miranda Mitchell. Do I have that right? Uh, yeah. Um, I go by Randy, but yeah, Miranda, that's me. Is this the right place for the interview? It is. Please do come in. I'm Carol. Sit wherever you like. Now, how did you hear about us? (laughs) Well, funny thing, actually. I was looking for flights for a vacation, and I saw this ad on my computer. Ah, yes, the recruitment campaign. I'm hoping we found just the candidate we were looking for. That was the general idea. Well, it looked like all the skills you needed are things I'm already doing in my job now, and it seemed like your company is pretty... I don't know. Fancy's not a great word, but pretty slick, I guess. I mean, you got a fountain right here in your office. I'm used to hearing running water all day where I am now, but this is a lot nicer. (laughs) So, anyway... 
I decided I had nothing to lose. I'm pretty happy where I am now, but I'm on the lookout for new opportunities, you know? New challenges, I guess. Well, I can guarantee you plenty of challenges here at the Treasury. Yeah, the Treasury. Um, that was an interesting name for a company. I guess the whole thing was Macro Information Systems Treasury, right? But you call it... Mist, yes. <laughs> yeah, like I said, that's pretty slick. Very stylish. <laughs> Indeed. Now, Miranda... Is that all right, if I call you Miranda? Uh, I prefer Randy, actually. Oh, of course, then. Randy, why do you want to work for us? Well, apart from the nice office in the city and everything and the flashy ad, um, I hope you don't think this is rude or silly or anything, but I don't really understand what it is you do here. I honestly tried to find that out on the website, but for the life of me, I, I couldn't figure it out. It kind of looked like that was on purpose. Exactly. How clever you are. You've hit it right on the nose, Randy. Our company is responsible for securing and protecting information. Oh, you mean like people's identities and stuff, that kind of thing, like passwords? <laughs> Among other things. I can't get into the details unless we offer you the position. That's how secretive we have to be here. Would you consider yourself a trustworthy person? Oh, yeah, definitely. I don't know if I ever told a lie in my whole life. Maybe a little fib here and there when I was a kid, but no, it's really important to me to be honest. And how are you at keeping secrets? Pretty good, I think. I mean, for sure, when it comes to work stuff... I've had to keep client information private for years now. You can check my references on that. Oh, well, I already called Tom O'Brien this morning, and he had nothing but wonderful things to say about you. Your work ethic, your attention to detail, your reputation is quite impressive, Randy. There does seem to be one significant gap here on your CV, but I'm sure you can provide me with a bit more context for that. Oh, you mean how I don't have a degree? Yeah, I'm working on that. I'm just about done. Well, I know you said you were satisfied with your current position, but if I could entice you, one of the perks here is tuition assistance. The Treasury is always more than happy to pay for the continuing education of its employees. Oh, wow. Really? Yes. Now. As much as I do want to convince such a promising candidate as yourself to consider working for us, this is a job interview after all. When I called Tom O'Brien, what qualities of yours do you suppose he spoke to? Why should we here at MIST hire you? Well, um, I'm really organized. You should see the way I keep my baking stuff set up at home. But... Um, I've been keeping the books at O'Brien's for years now, and I don't think I ever made a mistake I didn't catch right away. Um, I'm really good at managing lots of different projects all at the same time. I'm a fast learner. I'm good with people. I'm friendly and polite and everything. And, um, what else? What did Mr. O'Brien probably say about me? Uh, he probably talked about perseverance. I've been through some hard times, but I kept going, you know? So I bet he talked about that. Indeed, he did. And what would you say is your greatest accomplishment, Randy Mitchell? Uh, well, probably working on my bachelor's in business administration, even though I'm a little older than most people who are going to college right now. But I'm almost done. I just got a couple of credits left. And I think, even though I lucked out with my living situation, I've been uh, doing a good job of fixing up the house and maintaining it for the last few years, so I'd say that's another one. Ah. Uh. Tell me more about that. You own your own home. You seem very young to have reached such a milestone. <laughs> well, it's a funny story, actually. The house was basically a gift. My grandparents moved down to Florida a couple years ago, and they were going to give the house to my oldest cousin Bobby and his wife, but then they changed their minds at the last minute. How interesting. And that didn't cause any friction in your family. I hope that doesn't seem like I'm prying. No, it's fine. 
Um, well, no, actually, Bobby and Tina found a place that was a lot newer and closer to the city anyway, and... And you were the only other grandchild to give the house to. Uh, no, I have tons of cousins. Ah, so then, how did your grandparents come to decide on you as the recipient? Or heiress, should I say? <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't think I'd ever call myself that. It's just a cute little Cape Cod house, and it needed a lot of work, to be honest. But anyway, um, let me think. I think they said uh, they read some kind of article online or something, and, or maybe, what was it? They got like an email forward, and it made them think of me? Sorry, I don't really remember exactly. It was a couple years ago now. I just remember being surprised they picked me out of all my cousins. But, as you said, you've taken good care of the place. Oh, yeah, for sure. I learned all kinds of things, just watching videos and fixing them myself, and I repainted and redecorated all the rooms and everything. You really are a woman of many talents, aren't you, Randy Mitchell? <laughs> well, I hope so. I mean, I'm trying to put my best foot forward here. Of course you are. Now, what questions do you have for me? Uh, <laughs> I hope this doesn't seem like a silly thing to ask at this point, but... What exactly is the position? I tried to find that in the ad, but it didn't say. I applied kind of spur of the moment. It just looks so exciting. And then your assistant called me the same day, and now here I am, and I just... Absolutely. Well, you'd be doing more or less what you're doing for O'Brien Seafood, I imagine. Albeit, we don't sell fish, but managing a client database, some basic accounting, payroll, things of this nature... Does that seem like it's in your wheelhouse? Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I've been studying for. Now, there are a few catches to the position. I hope you don't mind, but there is some travel involved. Several required trips a year to our offices abroad. Checking in, making sure that their books are in order. An internal audit, essentially. Is that something you'd be able to manage? Really? I... Are you kidding? I love that. Fantastic. Now, based on that response, if I could further impose, there's even a possibility that we may need you to relocate. Oh, wow. Um, I didn't really think about that. I mean, travel, yeah, but moving, um... Our central office is in London. How does that sound? Oh, wow. <laughs> You think about that. Now, anything else I can answer for you about the job? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm a little, I, I didn't expect this to be so, um, this is like a dream come true, and your office is so, I mean, it's so elegant and sophisticated, and what floor are we on again? It's the 30th, and Randy, this isn't my regular office. It's just a temporary workstation I use when I find myself in the city. Uh, oh, really? Yes. If you're offered the position, this will be your office. What? Yes. You're kidding. <laughs> Rarely. It really will be your office, Randy. If we hire you on. Oh, so what's next, then? Well, I have people that I report to as well, so we'll have to bring you in for a second interview. Are you available later this week, say, Friday? Um, yeah, I can come in whenever. Excellent. Well, I'll arrange things with the higher-ups, and we'll make sure everything is prepared for you by then. Sounds great. Yes, but... Randy. Yeah? Between you and me, it's looking very favorable. Really? You think so? Oh, yes. I do think I've gotten a good read on you. Both of us have a penchant for organization, interior decorating, telling the truth. That sounds right, doesn't it? Yeah, wow. I can't believe how fast this happened. Um... Did you need anything else from me? Was there anything more to the interview? No, not for now. 
Thank you so much for coming in on short notice. I cannot convey to you what a relief it is to have a qualified candidate in front of me for once. Uh, oh, okay. Well, thanks. I think I'll see you Friday. Yes, Friday. Jonathan will follow up with the details. Okay, great. Thank you. No, thank you. Oh, well, what do you think I meant? If we do end up hiring her to do something around here, I have no doubt she'll be more capable of executing her responsibilities than you are. But we will have to work out how the two of you will work in the same place without bumping into each other, won't we? That will be awkward. <laughs> I told her I rarely joke, not never. Oh, of course not. Are you daft? If we hire her, we'll have to wipe that memory. How else will we explain how many of her fellow employees she sees coming and going in grey uniforms? Once I reinstate the dress code for this building, of course. Well, evidently you just haven't mastered the use of the interface. I can show you, or we could have just about any entry-level agent demonstrate the technique for you. I honestly don't see how you failed to take care of that aspect of the clean-up. In any case, now she'll be with us. You see how we do these things. Learn what they want. Go for the heart. That's all. No, that's exactly the point, isn't it? Everything I told her was true. We exist to protect the truth. We can't very well do that by being false. It's a delicate balance keeping the truth safe. We mustn't lie, but we mustn't make revelation of truth either. Exactly. She's ours now, and soon we'll be able to isolate her from that neighbor and that pesky little... Yes, how is that project going? <sighs> Why am I not surprised? Please tell me you have some sort of plan beyond I'm waiting to see what she does next. Good. See that you gather all the recordings and data. I'll need to review everything. Apparently you need someone looking over your shoulder every step of the way. I beg your pardon. No, really. Would you care to repeat that for me? It seems you're feeling rather bold, conservator. Now one more time, with feeling. Ah. Now how does that feel? Cold. Interesting, considering I've had this one in my hand for the last hour. But I suppose the feel of palladium against your temple, knowing that your superior may at any moment demonstrate for you what you should have done several days ago, might influence one's perception of temperature. Shall I show you? Do you still require a tutorial? Ah, 
So you'll be practicing. Good. Any other thoughts? Any feedback for your commandant? You appear to have quite a few opinions you'd like to voice today. Do you feel heard? Oh, how delightful. I'm so glad I could validate your point of view. Now, is there anything else you need from me before you run along and do your fucking job? Perfect. I'll be checking in. Don't disappoint me.